a group of uh, intelligentsia within the north central region uh, converged on Abuja recently to form what they call uh, the North Central People's Forum, uh, a breakaway, if you like, uh, from the umbrella body talking about the Northern uh, Consultative Forum. Uh, that's talking about, I mean, Area Consultative Forum talking about ACF. Now, it's a group of uh, a, a, a social cultural pressure group, uh, a regional, so to speak. Uh, that has been championed in the course of the North, uh, even though uh, right from its inception, there has been controversies regarding uh, whether the forum will be able to uh, meet its obligations of uh, championing or holding leadership accountable, uh, especially to the people of this region. Some say it's a toothless bulldog, so to speak. Um, we've seen you know, over the years how it has been faring. Um, in recent times, some will say it has been reduced, you know, to just writing press releases and so on. Now, before the formation of this new group, talking about N NCPF, there was also another breakaway group from the NCF, talking about the Northern Elders Forum, which is uh, being chaired by Professor Ango Abdullahi. It was formed by the likes of Aladisani uh, Zongondaura, uh, Paulo Nongo, Yaya Konde, and the rest of them. Now, the emergence of this new group within the North Central, even though there has been also another group in existence talking about the Middle Belt uh, Forum and several others within that uh, geopolitical zone. Uh, this, the proponents of this new group talking about the former FCT minister, uh, retired general uh, Jamal Husseini, a former deputy Senate president Ibrahim Mantu, um, a former deputy governor of Niger State, Ahmed Ibeito, and uh, former sports minister, Sanin Danusa, among several others. You know, they said the formation of the group was necessitated by uh, the need, you know, uh, to uh, project, you know, the challenges faced by that geopolitical zone. Uh, and of course, hold leadership accountable to the people. Well, all of this is happening within the once monolithic north talking about uh, one north which was championed and conversed and of course beheaded by the likes of uh, late Samadu Bello de Sardona of Sokoto who brought all the groups together you know uh, to form this regional uh, block uh, talking about the northern uh, northern uh, uh, people's, congress. people's yeah. congress then right correct so all of this uh, is what we're seeing today, the metamorphosis of this uh, northern sociocultural group. But it is happening at the time, the Corporate Affairs Commission also uh, just recently issued uh, a statement, you know, they registered in some of these sociocultural groups, uh, including the ACF. Well, one will begin to wonder why the scramble for these groups in the face of challenges facing this region. Uh, a region that uh, <clears throat> harbors almost more than 60 percent, if you like, of the total population of the country. A region that is promising in terms of uh, economic and other potentials. Uh, it has the vast arable land that will, is enough to cultivate food that will feed the entire West African sub-region. It is a region that is densely populated with people. Uh, talking about over 60% of the population residing in this region. Again, it is a region that is also blessed with uh, solid mineral resources, including oil deposits in recent times. All of this uh, potentials for the growth of the region in the face or in the, in, in the larger picture of the Nigerian uh, state, uh, because yes, the North cannot live in isolation. The pro, pro, uh, the coming together of the Southern and the Northern Protectorate in 1914, you know, uh, brought together the Nigerian project that we're seeing today. Um, well, well, we'll be looking at all of this on dialogue this morning, the contemporary challenges of the region, looking at the statistics, the indices of development, the region is lagging behind. If you're talking about electricity level, it is one of the toppest in the chart. If you're looking at uh, poverty rate, uh, the nine top ten 
poorest state in Nigeria uh, are domiciled in the north. We're talking about unemployment, you know, the figures are there, collapse industries, destitution, the number of children roaming the streets out of the 12, 13 million that we're talking about, 10 million are actually domiciled in the north. All of this are development indices that we'll be looking at on the platform this morning and why this Clinton groups, the fragmentations of this so-called, you know, the northern political, um, I mean, elite talking about these groups. Uh, and I'll be uh, talking with uh, Malam Awal Salihu, uh, a former director of the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission, NBC, now a lecturer with the National State University, Kathy. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Right. Um, let's start with the north. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a once very promising region, you know, uh, which was the envy of all. Uh, during the late Osama Dibello, the North was, you know, set on a very progressive pedestal, uh, developing from all angles, uh, industrial base, education, human capacity, and all of that. But since the demise of late Osama Dibello, a blessed memory, the North began to retrogress. Uh, despite all of these potentials. Um, let's start from, well, it, it's a very big topic if we were to look yes. at that, <laughs> but in the summary, why are we where we are today? It's a combination of forces uh, that led us to where we are today. Mm. Um, from the time that uh, Simon de Bello, mm. of blessed memory, mm. passed on, uh, when he was so brutally murdered mm. in that 1966 coup. Mm. Uh, one of the first things that happened uh, was, uh, let me say, a kind of, I don't know whether we could call it a kind of confusion. Okay. Yes, because um, the North was a bit like confused, destabilized, mm -hmm. and uh, for mm. a moment, mm. you know, um, could not get its bearing. Mm. And things deteriorated up to the level of the civil war, mm. because immediately after the uh, mm. after the coup mm. uh, that brought you know mm. uh, that brought uh, Agui Ronsi mm. on the on the throne, mm. his first his first um, act mm. was to create mm. um, this the, this act that mm. that, uh, th that this unitary government. Mm which you know took away power mm. from the regions mm. and actually concentrated power mm. in, the center. in the center now right from there mm. you know the the north did not have the resources mm. to do what it needed to do even its own resources that it had it could not control mm. uh, of course things deteriorated mm. up to the point of the civil war right now before the civil war ended nigeria was now divided into 12 states so politically, mm. the divisions had already started. started. So out of what we had, uh, mm. a, a one north, mm. you now have, uh, I think, um, nine states then, yes. at, at that time. Mm. And then from 12 states, mm. it was divided again. We were divided further mm. into, I think 19 uh, or there about. into 19 states. From subsequently there, 21 up and to 21 like and then, mm. you know, so mm. the political divisions mm. continued mm. and with the political divisions uh, and, and, and military administrations mm. that eventually, you know, uh, uh, lost mm. the, 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 the touch, group. let me say, mm. Mm. Uh, because in, in search for political power, mm. uh, a lot of infrastructure mm. was neglected. Mm. Power was going, roads were going, um, all the other mm. things that you know would normally mm. permit people to. Mm. But the worst thing that happened really to the north mm. was SAP. Mm. The structural when adjustment SAP, program. Yes, the structural adjustment program. Mm. When yeah. SAP came up, mm. now that led mm. to the disintegration of everything because uh, the industries that were still sustaining people mm. could not hold mm. the. Um, the, uh, the 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 infrastructure mm. you know deteriorated mm. and grinding poverty mm. became more stark eminent so oh, okay uh, let's look at this, the sectors now for mm. instance um the late of uh, the late Samuel de Bello was 
futuristic you know he yeah. was looking uh, he was foresighted he was looking at the need you know that was what even delayed the 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 the, the, the independence mm -hmm. when he realized that the north could not catch up uh, he he and his uh, uh, contemporaries then uh, decided that it should be the north should be given some time you know mm -hmm. to prepare for the independence and uh, shortly after he came on board he looked at the need to develop human capacity yes. and then set up institutions the, the Ahmed Bello University and several others, you know, colleges of education and all of that um, came on board. Uh, and then people were, capacity was, de was being developed. Again, he looked at industrialization. Mm -hmm. A number of industries sprang up then, you know, in the north. Yes. And then all of this, uh, you know, uh, each, I mean, uh, things that are done to, to set the stage for development. Yes. But after his demise, Reverse is the case. Now, talking about illiteracy, let's connect it with illiteracy. Uh, illiteracy. With all that he has done in terms of preparing the North for education, because he has seen what Awolo did, you know, in the South, uh, then, South, South, I mean, South, South West, then, yeah. you know, he was focusing on education. Yes. And he also realized that education is key and that he was doing that. Now, the literacy rate, if you look at it in Nigeria, the North is far, far, you know, uh, below you know, in terms of, so how do we get the institutional, I mean, how does this institutional decay in the education started? And what, what led to that, for instance? Let me, let me just give you an anecdote. Hmm. Uh, I was in primary school in hmm. Jos, LEA hmm. primary school. Hmm. And during one of the graduation ceremonies, hmm. the Minister of Education in the Northern Region, Alaji hmm. Isakaita, hmm. late Isakaita, drove all the way from Kaduna mm. to Jos to attend mm. the graduation ceremony of that elementary school. It was a primary school, mm. LEA primary school. I, I, that image is etched deeply mm. in my memory. Okay. Now, what am I trying to say? Mm. It is commitment. Mm. It is commitment of elders, leaders. Mm. Even after, uh, even after, um, uh, you know the the demise of uh, of mm. Sardona, for instance. Mm. You, you you find that little efforts were made here and there. Mm. You know by some of the military governors that took over. Audubak mm. O, for instance, in Kano, mm -hmm. did a wonderful job mm. with education. Mm. Uh, the governor of North Central State also, mm. uh, then from Kaduna, mm. did yeah. also some some hard some good work mm. with education. Now I'm just trying to give you mm. small examples, right, but. Right. By, by the eighties, mm. you could not. If you went back to your school, mm. you felt ashamed. Mm. You know, if you went back to your alma mater, mm. you felt ashamed. People in the university then mm. knew. I mean, before they knew how much they were getting mm. for what little they were paying in school. Where you had, a, as a university, mm. you know, undergraduate, you had your meal tickets for mm. a whole term mm -hmm. and you had your own room mm. you had sufficient space reading room and, but after a while you found that education was so bad mm. that the number of people continued to rise in the class that is the number per, mm. per teacher mm. and then even the conditions that the students had to live in became so bad that mm. you know you found a room mm. and being you know, occupied by you know, to be occupied mm. by two students to be mm. occupied by like eight to ten students mm. and, and overcrowded like uh, overcrowded hostels, you know, so. hostels overcrowded classes mm -hmm. you know underpaid teachers mm -hmm. i remember uh, at a point mm. the lecturers uh, asu Mm. The formation of us and all that, mm. they, they, they had to go on strike to say, you mm. know. Enough is enough in terms of the uh, infrastructure yeah, decay. Exactly. Mm. So, yeah, okay. So the infrastructure mm. of education, mm. the attention to education mm. waned completely right. after uh, the, 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 after Sardona's passing. Yes, attention. Uh, commitment funding, you know, funding. wane completely, completely. Um, gradually, so to speak. Yes. Uh, but this, of course, the the, the first mm. rise in mm. in our population mm. did not help matters. Again, because, population you know, upsurge. Because population upsurge was mm. there. You know, mm. the population was rising really fast, mm. and uh, because maybe lack of the foresight that Sadona had, mm. the later leaders did not have it. Mm. Instead, you know, they were not thinking Instead ahead. Instead of building, you know, yes, and or building what he has what started. Was there, it was not the same institutions are still there 
harboring, you know, despite the, the, the rise in population, they are well, still if there. You go to even, mm. let's take regional schools like Government College Kefi near, mm. nearby here, mm. which, which, which mm. I also attended, you know, uh, in Form 1. Mm. Look, from that school, mm. from Kefi, it's, I mean, if you went to Kefi any time before, mm. you, know, the, you know, in the 70s and 80s, I mean, but if mm. <laughs> the students, mm. I mean, if you went back, all those who went back there felt mm. so terrible. Right. Even, even mm. the premier, even in the south, some of the schools in the south mm. also suffered some of these things. Right, okay. So I, I, and, and this was problem. done by people who've enjoyed, you know, education, uh, free education, mm. The, 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 all the incentives that you talked about, you know, the meal tickets and all of that, mm -hmm. uh, even uniforms were being paid, certain stipends were also given, yes. you know, to encourage them. Okay, that, that's that, you know, it's also wide. If we can talk mm -hmm. about it, it's going to be a very uh, big uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Again, he was, the North was a, a force to reckon with in terms of, you know, a contribution to the center, if there is anything like that, mm -hmm. because the agricultural potentials were yielding, yes. you know. Uh, the pyramids in the in the, 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 in Kano, the, the granite pyramids, pyramids were yes. springing up, you know. And then farm produce were coming from the north. Agriculture was booming and all of that. Yes. And then gradually that also went down. Yes. Where do we get wrong? You know, how do we get that also wrong? I'm afraid we still have to go back to the SAP years. Mm. Because, mm. Uh, you see, with the structural adjustment program, Mm. where Nigeria's currency continued to get divided, where interesting, um, you know, policies were being imported from the World Bank and the, mm. you know, and, and its ilk, you know, they came with policies that mm. actually impoverished the people, okay. that made people to lose everything. Mm. Now, when, when if you remember, after the, after the, it was after the, mm. uh, the, the, the introduction of SAP that actually, the granite pyramids completely disappeared. The cotton pyramids completely disappeared. The the, um, the, 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 the 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 cotton pyramids disappeared. The industries began to collapse. The textile industries that were in Kaduna, that were actually you know um, that that were actually um, employing so many people, you know, collapsed completely, and they could not get the raw materials, and then. The tanneries in Kano and, mm. and Sokoto that, that were providing the mm. hides and skin that was being mm. exported out mm. of the country for very good value, you know, was disappearing. Mm. Uh, you know, and then other crises began to... Again, the to policies too. Then we have the, the, the Agricultural Marketing Board and all of that, the oh, extension, services the extension services that have yes. also, you know, gone with the... Go, all, all gone with so, the... So, so, so actually, actually, the problem... Mm was, you know, uh, leadership, mm. issue of leadership. Mm. Um, the idea of building structures, mm. the idea of providing mm. infrastructure to make things happen, mm. like, like the, cutting, like the, like the mm. marketing boards you are talking about. Mm. You know, the, the, why were they suspended? Because it became even unprofitable mm. to, to operate them because, because the value of the currency in this country and everything, well, well, you know, is gone and, and everything. But at the at the at the same time you you find that the the the, the government uh, was for me i think it, it was it, it's, it's lack of it's lack of leadership mm. right okay that, that's it we've got to open up that too again it's <laughs> it's another, topic another, on this one another, but we're just yes. looking at them you know in piecemeal uh, again uh, looking at the potentials in the agricultural sector mm. not beyond just the farming produce you know uh, again the cattle rearing was another venture yes. uh, on its own. Uh, some say the cattle itself is an industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you look at the Northeast, for instance, uh, you know, substantially has this, uh, you know, um, agricultural potential, talking about the farm, I mean, the, the, the cattle rearing, I mean, the cattle and all of that. The herds. Fisheries. Yeah, the fishery again. Yes, yes. Now, so if, if you look at that, um, I was discussing with an economic res economist recently, and he was talking about the cattle as an industry. Yes. That if leaders have foresight, have also realized what they have, you know, especially uh, state governors where this uh, 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 cattle, uh, I mean, are uh, 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 domiciled, mm. they could have come with come up with industries that would add value to what they have for the cow as an industry, because. 
you 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 exploit the milk mm -hmm. the, the 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 beef the, the skin, skin yes you know the, the even, even the trunks the, the hoofs the hoof yes. and the horns yes you know the, 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 also, the yes uh, the horns yeah. yes these are also value addition yes. to it but instead of even doing the, that even the dungs mm, right that, again that, yes again the, 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 for fertilizer and yes, all of that can be used for other uh, right so know. so all of this is happening but instead of taking advantage or looking at the potentials uh, in this uh, they are allowed to become a menace now mm -hmm. uh, you you allow the farmer even even though the farm i mean the the pastoralists too mm. are not taking uh, are not taking advantage of the modern modernization well, the, the 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 you see uh, we, mm. we mentioned earlier the fact that mm. we had things like extension services mm. now that is a way mm. that government was using mm. to control and direct mm. the activities of farmers mm. The extension service people would advise the farmers this is what you need to do this is the time for you to plant mm. these are the crops mm. to you for new seeds new new technology that was introduced is extension service people that took it down to the farmers mm. it's the same extension service people that used to um, mm. vaccinate mm. the cattle right. and the other animals mm. so there was interaction mm. government was interacting with everybody mm. at their own level right. now this problem of lack of foresight mm. you know of of of, our, of, of latter leaders mm. is what led to this mm. ah, how, how was it that they could not see for instance mm. that uh, cattle rearing mm. could no could not continue into the, the way it used to be the way it used to be mm. i mean it, it's they have to take up you know that the, the, the organization was growing mm. the brutally and the, mm. and the and disappearing could not could not be maintained and mm. without that of course it mm. was recipe for trouble, for trouble. because mm. they, they, they are used to passing this mm. way mm. and suddenly they now come and they find you know a, a house has been built there mm. or a road has been built there mm. or something they, they have to find alternatives yeah, yeah. yeah. so, so in the, had been built. So yeah they had to find an alternative route mm. and of course the alternative route meant going into other people's farms and before you know it mm. now trouble begins between you know people who are totalists and farmers yes, conflict people and so who on. had lived peacefully right. with each other for a right long time. so i was talking about the, the talking about foresight now the need mm. to look inward Yes. Uh, some of our state governors who have this potentials in in huge you know uh, capacity or in, in in i mean in number mm. you'll find out that they don't look at because again the idea of waiting for the national kick set in you know yes. governors will have to stay at their respective uh, government houses expecting at the end of the month allocation will be made mm. and then they do what they want to do uh, give you know a fraction of it for development and then uh, take away the remaining and all of that now instead of looking at how they can develop their local potentials i was talking about the cow as an industry uh, states like Borno, Yobe, and the rest of them, mm. Zamfara, Sokoto, yes. and the rest of them, yes. have this comparative advantage. If they can set up industries that would add value to these cows, mm. you know, uh, instead of allowing them to become a challenge, now they have they would they would have create jobs, again add value to what the farmers are doing, increase you know uh, the, the investment in it because people will now see the result you know they they, they instead of moving them southward mm. they can also re remain where they are and make even more money exactly. so all of this is not happening and uh, that is that talking about agriculture there's much to talk about again industrialization mm. um there were a number of industries in the north yes. talking about the textile industries the generies and all of that yes. you know and, but suddenly they, they they've gone under Places like mm. places like Gusau mm. in Zamfara State, mm. places like Kaduna, mm. you know, places like uh, uh, Kano. Kano, yeah, the Sharada uh, Industrial Estate, the Sharada Estate. Estate. Mm. people, places like Kutuskum, mm. uh, were places that were famous mm. for all these generics that you are talking about, mm. and those cotton fields mm. were the ones that fed the textile industry in mm. Nigeria. Mm. But again, Shabi, we can't run away from mm. the damage that SAP did. Mm. to the image i mean to yeah. the to the ability of nigeria to survive yeah, yeah but if we talk about south uh, malam salihu mm. it, it, it's it's a policy that was that was implemented across nigeria not yes, just it was, so it why was, was it but more uh, prominent why but, it, it was, was more prominent mm. in nigeria mm. for for yeah. for several reasons in the north sorry yes in mm. the north of mm. nigeria for several reasons mm. one the, the 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 ability of nigerians of the of the north mm. to 
sustain its own industries was very very badly mm. affected by that by that project and it does that's that's where it, it no longer became mm. profitable mm. for for nigerians to mm. to to produce you know uh, textile materials mm. so they now have to rely on importation mm. and if they cannot if the textile industry is dying then who feeds the textile industries is the cotton mm. you know industry the farming industry mm. and if those ones cannot survive mm. then of course the pyramids will disappear mm. the same thing with a lot of the industries that produce palm oil and mm. that produce uh, granite oil does it? Mm. those ones that are in in Kano and other places okay. it's the same it's the same oh, okay okay uh, so that's a turning yeah. point what i'm saying is yeah. we had a lot of problems mm. with leadership yes but the turning point mm. of the decay right. was from that Okay, sorry for the interruption. I understand we have to take a commercial break. Okay. Uh, we'll be back in a moment. Please stay with us. Again, uh, for staying with us on Dialogue, and today we're looking at the North, its challenges and the fragmentations. And I've been talking with uh, Malam Awal Salihu, a former director of the MBC, and now a lecturer with uh, uh, Nasara State University, Kefi. Uh, together, we'll be looking at uh, the trajectory, the, the, you know, what happened uh, to the North and where we are today. And of course, we'll be also talking about the fragmentations. The build-up to this discussion was actually based on the proliferations of groups in the names of the North as a region. Uh, but then conversing, perhaps some would say, their own personal interest or group interests, especially within the schemes of political uh, activities in the country. So, uh, Malam Salih, you were making a point before we went on that short commercial break. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the policies, the SAF, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, but some would say beyond SAF, yes, successive administration's policies were, had a direct impact uh, on what is happening in the north. The reason why we're building this is to look at the correlation between uh, this policy inefficiency and what is happening today. Take for instance, we're talking about deindustrializing the north. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to say the entire country because industries are still thriving in Lagos and other places, but then industries have collapsed in the north. Yes. You know, there must be a reason why they, are, they collapsed. Uh, you are talking about South. Uh, some also talk about successive administration's policies, especially uh, that of uh, between 1999 and, uh, you know, uh, 1999 and, uh, you know, f five years later, yes. you know, after the return to democracy, uh, a number of policies were made that put industrial base, uh, especially of the North, uh, on a disadvantage position. I uh, will begin to see shortly how the uh, owners of these factories started moving there their equipment, you know, southwards again. There wasn't an em enabling environment for them to make a return on investment, mm. so they have to fold up. And th their folding up also has a direct connection with the criminality that we're seeing today in the north, mm. because we have a lot of idle minds. I, I don't know how you're looking at this policies and how they affect, you know. Well, you see, when um, when mm. when Nigeria mm. uh, went back to democracy. Mm. or let me say to civilian government mm. in 1999. Mm. Uh, it was uh, some kind of uh, an elitist political arrangement. Mm. Uh, the annulment of the 1980, 1993 yeah, election, election right? had uh, you know, created a lot of acrimony mm. between particularly uh, 
particularly among uh, among the, the southwesterners South mm. uh, who felt that um, mm. uh, something that belonged to them mm. had been stolen or and the bishop been, changed along the road yes mm. so they, they 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 wanted you know so that you remember that sort of compensation that, huh? yes yeah. no you, well you remember that before then you know there were lots lots of you know mm. problems mm. Uh, that led to the creation mm. of various Public militia groups, you know, mm, and, 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 and the, 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 the coming of the Nadecos and the OPC, the, 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 mm, the, mm, the Masobs, the you know, mm, at that time, mm, the threat of disintegration, yeah. you know, was becoming was mm, becoming very very yeah, strong. Important, right? Then, um, of mm. course, somehow the elites came together and uh, mm. you know worked it out mm. by themselves, uh, from the interim government to Abacha's government, and then to Abdul Salam, where they now had an arrangement where Obasanjo was brought out from mm. prison, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to become the yeah, next president. I was made the president. Yes. You know, even uh, though uh, against the, 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 the wish of some, some, some people in the north. Even, for, even know, some people the, the in the late, south. Later, Bakarabi was asked to mm. step down, you know, yes. so that he, he, he emerged. Even and some people from mm. the south were mm. not happy, mm. you know, to have Obasanjo there. Because uh, he had to, I think it was only him and Falai, mm. Olufalai, that even stood for, and, and, and more people in the South, for instance, preferred mm. Olufalai to mm. Obasanjo because that was the politician, yeah. while this one was uh, more this military, military. Yeah, because, coming from the military yes, background. coming from the military background. But mm. you know, mm. the elites then, the military people were the ones who, you know, controlled everything. Mm. And so eventually, uh, that election, uh, there is a notion that they still hold the S, yes, so to they, speak. They, 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 and they showed it at that point. <laughs> yeah. So uh, up to today, mm, some believe that they still hold the S. They, they still <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so you know, when 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 Obasanjo came in, um, mm. many people were happy mm. that he came in, but uh, very soon people in the north began to feel mm. uh, like something was going wrong mm. because suddenly mm. some in in the first instance. There was a reorganization in the military mm -hmm. where lots and lots of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, northerners yeah, were, put were, on the were, edge, were, yeah. were, were, were taken out mm -hmm. and, 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 and many of them were replaced with people from the southwest. Mm -hmm. So that started to create a certain level mm -hmm. of impression that uh, yes. then, yeah. then mm -hmm. as, as that went on, uh, some some policies in the, uh, you know, in the government of, of Asenjo also led to the, mm -hmm. you know, closure. Mm. of so many mm. suddenly industries you know industries mm. in Kano mm. for instance were just going mm. industries in Kano those are the two main you mm. know industrial hubs, hubs of, of the north mm. suddenly all those things mm. started going mm. and uh, people you know were, were, were packing their bags and leaving the country those mm. that are they would, they would, they would from outside, yeah. including mm. even furniture companies mm. Started, started leaving, you know, so it was a, mm. it, it was a, a very, it, so mm. that, 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 that also mm. increased mm. the level of um, poverty, mm. you know, that, that made things to become so much more difficult. Worse. Yeah. And then from the side, the fringes, mm. if, if you remember, that was also about the time when uh, the, uh, mm. The, mm. The, the Boko Haram mm. emerged, yes. was, was imagined mm. following, you know, uh, the, the political activities in the other parts of the country, mm. uh, issues of Sharia, issues of the, and mm. then, of course, the, mm. the, the militant group, the, the Boko Haram, you know, in, the, the, the mishandling by the, politicians. They were, they were mishandled by politicians. Yeah, because it was also a creation, was said to be a creation of politicians, to, too. Yes, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so looking at all of that, yeah. um, the, the, the connectivity, the, the, the correlation with what mm. is happening today, because we have to look at, we have to look back at why we are where we are. Certainly, mm. we have to look at all of that. Yeah. And I don't mind, I say it's a double for sure. sure. You know, uh, once you don't create jobs for the young teeming population, they create mm. jobs for themselves. Uh, once someone is hungry, and a hungry man is an angry man. Mm. So that all, you know, build up to the, the insecurity we are seeing in the North, yes. which has become, you know, a brand now. So to, I don't really want to say a brand, but it has become a challenge yes. that is living with us. Uh, it happened as a result of certain uh, policies and certain inactions that we talk about. Mm -hmm. Collapse of the industries, uh, it, it rise in illiteracy level, mm -hmm. poverty, and all of that. But today, instead of our political elites, you know, to come together and look at these challenges in the face, perhaps uh, converge in a room, shut the doors and say, okay, let's look at each other in the face and see how we can salvage this region out of these doldrums. 
let's look at how we're going to take 10 million children out of the streets. It is not the issue. It's about how do we fragment you know, our political uh, uh, groupings to, to situate ourselves properly ahead of 2023 elections. Mm. Some will say perhaps uh, in anticipation of a fray on desperate politicians too, mm. who wants to take advantage of the 2023 and all of that. We've seen this happen, you know, in the build up to 2011. A group emerged from the, uh, the, the Ario Consultative Forum, yes. which backed the then president, uh, I mean, good luck, Jonathan, even against the interests of the North. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how you're looking at this. Are they actually groupings in the interests of the region or groupings in the interests of these individuals? Well, you know, there, there are the, 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 the biggest problem mm. that we have, uh, apart from, uh, you know, the greed mm. of the leadership, uh, or, or rather propelled by the greed of the leadership mm. is what is leading to this creation of so many uh, you just look at it you know from from even a mm. historical perspective um, pre-independence mm. all those movements started as independence movements mm. you know movements um, mm. to, to 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 fight for independence for Nigeria mm. uh, but by the time even political parties were formed, you'll find that even at the, right from the very beginning, it was it was it was regionally based. Then during the Second Republic, oh. it also became more ethnically based, mm. Mm. where you had the NPN, you know, UPN and uh, and, 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 and and Afga. Then when you now go to the next, you know, mm. if, when you now go to the Third Republic, the fourth, then you know that's the time. When you now had, you know, all these um, ethnic militias that came up, you know, and were creating, you know, but the the main issue, really, uh, mm. like you, you pointed out, mm. is the fact that what is going on mm. is that everybody, each of these groups mm. that came up, were not coming up in order to develop any region mm. or in order to. But even those that were claiming to fight for identity, mm. you know, politics, mm. you know, like like in, in North, North Central, where you have the Middle Belt movement, mm. at the end of the day, mm. it, it, it turned out that even they, mm. even the leadership of those groups, were not even looking after the, the challenges, the challenges of, of those, that yeah. were facing mm. the, 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 the populace mm. in those areas. Mm. What everybody was looking for was to find a position mm. where they can, you know, become... Um, useful, relevant. Uh, yeah. that, uh, that would make them relevant towards you know the, uh, the, the 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 incoming you know government, so that when when, when mm. as uh, for instance now uh, it is it, it is believed mm. or rather it, it is believed that uh, power is likely to shift to yeah. shift you know mm. to the to the south. Mm. Uh, the northern politicians uh, who new mm. quote unquote when mm. they suffered mm. you know during the times mm. of Obasan Joe and perhaps a little bit mm. during the time of Jonathan mm. you know are beginning to get jittery mm. and all they are thinking about mm. is not how to help their people mm. but how to position themselves so that they will remain relevant mm. when when this uh, when, 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 when the comes, political activities you know, started political activities yeah. that yeah. is why all this uh, proliferation mm. is because yes place. one will find it difficult to understand the rationale behind especially the formation of this new group mm. talking about the north the, the central, central people's forum yes, people's at a time you know, one of its own, so to speak. Mm. A former minister of agriculture, Audu Obe, who happens yes. to come from the north yes. central, is spearheading or is at the helm of affairs at the NCR, at the, at the ACF, yes. talking about the Ario Consultative Forum. Yes. And you know, the the, the the argument is that we are doing this because we want to salvage our people, we want more attention to our people, and all of that. So, when you have a, a leader of this pan northern group, mm. you know, on the saddle. Mm. Still, you don't have confidence in him, and you feel that it is important to come up with another group. Uh, well, so it, it becomes questionable. You see, you see when you see mm. one of two things, mm. when groups splinter, mm. there are usually one of two reasons. Mm. One is either the leadership 
of that group mm. is not uh, behaving itself mm -hmm. and doing the right thing, or not accommodating, and, and not accommodating the mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. or there are people who are power hungry mm. and are looking for an opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, to make use of that group for mm -hmm. other reasons, for reasons other than what mm -hmm. you know they are they are formed. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the the formation of uh, Aerial Consultative Forum, for mm -hmm. instance, mm -hmm. uh, it came about because the North was beginning to get worried mm. about the issue of fragmentation, mm. how the North itself was being fragmented this, yeah. and all that. And Sultan Machilo at that time called people together and said, look, we can't allow this kind of thing to happen. Mm. Let us see if we can bring back the glory mm. of the old North. Let's come back together. And mm. Now, you can say that some of those people had sincere, mm. you know, intentions. But, but, right. but very soon, mm. you know, then the, uh, another another group, uh, the youth, the youth group came mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Then the coalition of youth groups. Then this. Then you know. Mm -hmm. And before you know what is happening, uh, the, the moment those groups mm -hmm. started taking sides mm -hmm. politically, partisanship, going to partisanship, partisan politics. You know, mm -hmm. that is the end of. Mm -hmm. the We're beginning to see how this the influence gradually waning, you know, especially the, the youth groups that yes, you're talking about. Yes. Uh, before now, they were seen to be championing the cost of the, the region, you know, yes. and then speaking, uh, you know, uh, in line with what the people want. But gradually, they are beginning to be seen as more of a political movement yes. than, than a pressure group, you know, uh, and all of that. Um, but fundamentally, uh, if, if we look at all of this, we have similar challenges, whether we like it or not, uh, be it the North Central, be it the Northwest or the Northeast. The insecurity alone has brought together all of these uh, sub-regions, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And then instead of us to have a collective voice or a collective platform mm -hmm. to discuss some of these challenges and see how we can address them, we're rather further fragmenting the public, uh, you know, creating multiple groups Take, for instance, the ACF alone. Now we're talking about three different groups, right. or four, so to speak. Four. Yeah, if I talk fact, about that of... Uh, there are more than that. When you look at even all the youth mm, groups that are, now, that are also imagine. breaking up mm. into smaller mm. you know, units mm. uh, of the same organization. Mm. So mm. The, the fragmentation is, is, is real. Mm. But you see, like I said, the, the reasons for the fragmentation are usually mm. either because the leaders are not doing what they are supposed to do, mm. or because there are some people who want to bring in other motives, political motives that are different from, or that the, the, mm. the, you know, the, they are not satisfied with mm. the direction that the, the group cool. is going, mm. and they want to create, you know, another, another mm. group. Mm. The, the, the 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 creation, the the, the youth forum. Mm. The moment it went into politics, mm. the moment it took sides mm. during the last mm. political dispensation, mm. that was the end of it. It was no longer seen or taken seriously, mm -hmm. and the issues. And the same thing with even the Northern Elders Forum. Mm -hmm. The moment the Northern Elders Forum mm -hmm. became, you know, more overtly, political, you know, yeah. political, that was the end of the story. Mm -hmm. And you see, it's this politics that's always, you know, causing, you know, the the the, the, the backward, mm -hmm. backward. Yes, one critical challenge which is begging for answer is, of course, the need to have a voice, which is missing yes. in all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, the North no longer have a voice, so to speak. Uh, before now, we have leaders, very, very uh, respected leaders that they talk, you know, the entire North listens, mm. listen. But today, you can't pinpoint one person that will talk and the entire people will listen because of all of these fragmentations and interests that we are talking about. Mm. It's a critical challenge and a gap that needs to be addressed. But before we take, um, I mean, I take on the next question, uh, we'll open the lines for our viewers to call in, uh, share their thought with us. Um, the numbers to call will soon be on your screen. You can also uh, send uh, a text, I mean, via our WhatsApp number, which was, will also be on the screen as well, uh, so that you can be a part of this conversation. We're looking at the North, its challenges, and the fragmentations. Now, we're talking about having a voice, uh, Malam uh, Salih. Yeah. Can we, is it a possibility <laughs> that the North will come back to that I mean, to, to, we'll be able to get that past glory, return, where we'll have leaders of thought, leaders who will be listened to by, by all. Is it a possibility? Well, um, some time ago, when uh, mm. I think it was Dan Agbese, mm. who was uh, 
walking on a treatise where he was saying mm. that um, divided the stand. Mm. You know, he was talking about the fragmentation of the middle belt movement. Mm. You know, because at a point, even mm. the middle belt movement itself, mm. you know, became got, got also fragmented further, yeah. into so many, you mm. know, smaller units. Mm. And in, there was also an alliance at some point yes. with, the, with the Niger Delta with group, the, Niger Delta, the Pandev. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You see, the, 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 when he was discussing it, what he was saying was, well, mm. maybe it is because you know, each of these groups doesn't want to put, you know, all its eggs in, in one basket. basket. Okay. So it's better mm. to have several, you know, to be hydra-headed, mm. so that even your enemies mm. will not know which of the heads to cut off mm. and all that. Well, I wish that were the case with, mm. with the North, mm. but unfortunately, what is happening with North, mm. as far as fragmentation is concerned, mm. is just political interests. Mm. You see, people... Yeah. Okay, we're beginning to have the call. Sorry for the okay. interruption. Hello, hello. Yes, good morning. Yeah. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Yes, who is on the line? My name is Ibrahim Babazuga. Okay, where are you calling from? I'm calling you from Just Not. Just Not, okay, go ahead, please. That's just it. Okay, go ahead. Please and please. Hmm. The issue is that uh, you have to be telling uh, our leader hmm. the truth. Hmm. Especially Honorable Hamra and Hamra Nidana. That we are in hunger. Hunger will kill us. Please and please, you have to do something. Okay. Um, well, you're, you're talking outside. Hey, they're not outside the topic yeah, anyway, but. I'm a teacher. Mm. And uh, there is nothing that is going on now. Okay. Please, please. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, my goodness. So emotional, you know, yes. uh, talking about, he's actually talking about what is happening what is to them in their happening? respective area. Yeah, well, it's talking about see, policy you see, now. You see, you see mm. what is going on, what mm. is going on. I mean, he's absolutely right. Mm. Our leaders need to know mm. for sure that, look, what is going on in the streets, mm. you know, is different from mm. probably what, they, what yeah. they are getting from reports, mm. you know, from the people or the agents that they have uh, assigned mm. to do certain things for them. Mm. Um, a, 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 like in, in the case of, 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 of this uh, hey, caller, man, yeah. or this caller, I'm sorry, I, I, mm. I, I shouldn't assume. Uh, Ibrahim, yeah. Yeah, I, Ibrahim. Mm. Uh, you see, as a teacher, with, with, with the COVID-19 hmm. pandemic. So, sorry, I would have to okay. interrupt again. Maybe we have to take the calls and then we'll come and back. And then come back, yes. okay. Hello, hello, good morning. No, no. Yes, well, alaikum salam. Who do we have on the line? My name is Lehman Mohammed from Duse, Bari, Riyakam. Okay, Mohammed from Duse in Buari. Go ahead. I'm from Enugu State. Oh, but you, you are an indigenous of Enugu. Go ahead, please. I'm going to this presentation. That is going to bring many people to the world advice. Mm. See, there are two things for Nigeria for this sovereignty. Not the sovereignty of Nigeria, the sovereignty now. Now to learn lessons of every country where they where, where they are alive now. Mm. See, it has been a today or something. Two days they go to they go to they go farm. They teach them farm work and hand work from mm. primary school to secondary school. Now, this thing was born in Nigeria, no, not this born in Nigeria, like before. Mm -hmm. Like before, but the big Nigerian people, mm -hmm. our politics above all those problems mm -hmm. for Nigeria. I can't blame the government mm -hmm. to give us advice to, to, to solve problems for our Nigeria. Mm -hmm. See, our, 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 like now, I want, I did, I did, I did cry. But I do want to go to come and give us advice of Nigeria. Because anything where they happen for Nigeria, now if you look at before mm. before how many twenty years ago, if mm. they are if it's any outer man, mm. that you know when they all put gap, they come any place any place for Nigeria. Do any anything for that problem. The problem was so but now mm. all those things come politics come spoil everything. Mm. See, yeah. I 
Okay, Sulema, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Okay, thank you very much. Sulema, Sulema, uh, there are other people on the line. Thank you very much. You made the point, uh, and uh, our guests would also respond to that. Hello, good morning. Hello. You have to turn down the volume of the TV so that we can communicate. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, who do we have on the line? Yarima, go ahead, please. Thank you, uh, thank you, Arima. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arima. You've made a point. Okay, Arima is uh, talking about the fair share of uh, the, the blame, you know, had to be put on the elites, the political elites, who've had opportunities to turn things around, but we fail to do that. Okay. Um, Suleiman is talking about fuel as a cause, not, you know, because the free money has made everyone to become lazy and all of that. <laughs> and then uh, the other young man from uh, Plato is talking about poverty, you know, hunger. Mm. So just oppose all of them together and let's see how we can have uh, a solution, possible well, solution. Well, uh, mm. it is you know, we're talking possible solutions now. Mm. I think what we need to look at is uh, what mm. are the, how do we apportion responsibilities? Mm. For instance, the mm. federal government has responsibilities. Mm. It needs to pay a lot of attention mm. to the infrastructure, yeah. which, well, they, 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 they're, they're, they're working on some of them, mm. but the infrastructure in the north mm. needs a lot of attention. Mm. Um, people are disheartened mm. by the slow pace of the work, let's say, even on the road from mm. from Abuja to Kano, to mm. people don't. We're talking think about it can, less than twenty percent or twenty yes, percent of the. People don't think it can be completed mm. within the tenure of this administration. Mm. The the rail line mm. that is supposed to come, you know, from Ibadan to Kano, mm. has the work started on it yet? Mm. No, it hasn't started. Mm. You see, these are some of the even the ambitious, that, ambitious AKK. You know, the pipes have been the, supplied, the, but. But, but no, no, no guarantees as to whether it will be completed. Yes, so mm. so the North needs mm. to get its own fair share mm. of, of, of those things, mm. and there's a, there's a need to work mm. on it. Thank you. But, but that is, okay. <laughs> Thank you. We have to, okay. I think we have to uh, bring the discussion to an end. I know you have a lot to say. <laughs> it's a continuous conversation. It, it uh, is, we'll, we'll bring you is. back, you know, to talk more on this. Uh, that have been uh, Malam Awal Salihu, uh, former director of the MBC, and a lecturer with uh, National State University, Kefi. Together we'll be looking at the North, its challenges and the fragmentations. Thank you very much once again for talking to us. Thank you. On his behalf and the technical crew, my name is Shapiro Suleiman. Have a wonderful day ahead.
just like you did it know star times offer pay as you go parent options you might also have missed numerous fantastic channels we offer for family entertainment